The Washington State Cougars had their first game of the 2024-25 season yesterday against the Portland State Vikings in Pullman at Martin Stadium, and they did exactly what they needed to do against the FCS opponent, Portland State University Vikings. After a three and out on their first drive, Portland State came back to score, after which I thought, oh gosh, here we go again. After which the Cougars starting offense had eight consecutive touchdown drives, not including kneeling to end the first half. En route to beating the Portland State University Vikings 70 to 30, scoring 70 points for the first time since 1997. The Washington State defense, as Coach Dickert stated in his press conference after the game, definitely has some work to do, especially on the defensive line of being more physical. They allowed 449 total yards against the Vikings, 234 passing yards, and 215 yards on the ground. Dickert said it's never a good feeling when you see a three on your opponent's scoreboard, but the Cougars defense, at least the first half, was able to keep the Vikings pretty limited beyond that first drive. They kept holding them to three and out after three and out, after which the Cougars offense would score on explosive plays. The Portland State Vikings had a total time of possession of 40 minutes and 26 seconds versus the Cougars only needing 19 minutes and 34 seconds to score their 70 points. Those 70 points also included the longest pick six in Washington State University history after Stephen Hall intercepted a pass in the final three minutes of the first half after which he took it 100 yards for a touchdown. Another big stat is that Washington State had no turnovers on the day. John Mateer looked phenomenal. After his first drive in which they went three and out, he looked absolutely dialed in. It didn't take him all that many attempts and completions to rack up the yards and touchdowns. He hit Kyle Williams four times for 141 yards. Kyle Williams averaged 35.2 yards per catch on the day. He had two touchdowns. Kyle Williams in his senior year is looking to have a special season. And in this game specifically, he showed his ability to get those yards after the catch. He had 105 yards after the catch, which is more receiving yards than anyone else had the entire game. Mateer hit Oregon Ducks transfer Chris Hudson four times for 101 yards, and that included the Cougars' first touchdown of the day coming from this insane Chris Hudson laying out catch. And here's an angle from behind the end zone of that catch. Trey Shackleford, Wayshawn Parker, and Trey Lechner also had receiving touchdowns on the day. Mateer did say coming into this game that he was a bit nervous that first drive, but after that, it's just playing football. I don't know, I wasn't as nervous as I thought I'd be, and I've been here for a while, and I think I'm mature enough to understand I'm good enough to play this level. But yeah, I was a little nervous, unfortunately, going into that first drive, but after that, it was good. Mateer on the day went 11 for 17, 352 yards with five touchdowns in the air, plus two carries for 55 yards and another touchdown. On top of his stats through the air, John Mateer also rushed the ball two times, totaling 55 yards, averaging 27 and a half per carry, which included this insane 40 yard touchdown run late in the first half to put the Cougars up 49 to 10. It was at this point in the broadcast that the booth casually mentioned that John Mateer apparently squats close to 600 pounds. I was able to find this clip of Mateer from this offseason getting in some work. 40 yard touchdown run. College ball 25, gonna get your speed up now? Man, I hope so. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. That was a cool one. John's performance today, you know, getting it out to you guys. I loved it, Heisman. And true freshman running back Wayshawn Parker looks special. He carried the ball eight times for 96 yards, including one touchdown on the ground, one touchdown through the air. He averaged 12 rushing yards per carry on the day. And listed at six foot, 200 pounds, he became the first true freshman for the Cougars to score both a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown in their first game since Max Borgie back in 2018. As we all know, Max Borgie went on to have a pretty special career at Washington State. Wayshawn was a three-star recruit coming out of Sacramento, California this past year. And Wayshawn will certainly be leaned on throughout the season to carry the rock, as Dickert said in his post-game press conference. What did you see out of them that kind of, I mean, that's the most points Wazoo has scored since 1997. We ran the ball, you know, and when you can run the ball, it's going to open up lanes for the RPO game. We didn't even get much to the play-action pass game today, uh, but I thought John did a really good job of settling in. I, You know, you get the first three and out, it's not what, the way you want to open the season, but I... I'm glad we had to respond to adversity, and I thought the offensive guys did a tremendous job. I mean, everyone ate today. I mean, you saw skill sets across the board that we've been talking about. It's been great to finally see it really applied to the field. So I thought a run after the catch today was phenomenal, and we're going to need that as we continue to go throughout this season. Here is the WCU Cougars' remaining schedule. These next two weeks will be crucial. Next week, they take on Texas Tech at home in Pullman. They're going to be the first big test. They are a Big 12 opponent, after which they will take on the Washington Huskies in the Apple Cup in Lumen Field, after which the remainder of their schedule will largely be Mountain West opponents outside of the Pac-12 matchup against the Oregon State Beavers. 
Some great news that I didn't realize until this week's game was that the Pac-12 and the CW Network along with Fox Sports have teamed up to broadcast all of their games for the 2024 season. So we're not having to deal with the Pac-12 Network at all this season. You could just go on to your regular cable subscription and you'll be able to watch all of the Pac-12 games for both the Cougars and the Beavers. And to clarify, yes, it still is the Pac-12 even though there's just two teams remaining. Washington State and Oregon State, as we learned throughout this offseason, have retained all of the rights of the Pac-12 and they now have this season and next season to rebuild the conference and have at least eight schools within the Pac-12 if they want to remain a Power 5 conference. To stay up to date on all things Washington State University football throughout the season, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.